Okay, so welcome everybody to uh, the uh, Xenography vlog number three, uh, whatever that is. And we're going to have a look today at this this little baby. This is the Leica 3. Um, broadly similar to the camera we were looking at last week, which was the Leica 2. It's essentially the same machine, uh, the same design with a few little differences um, which add up to uh, quite uh, quite uh, some important differences. So the first difference that you can see on the Leica 3 is this little thing here which is the slow speed dial. Right, you've got two speed dials on this camera. There's the first one on the top from 20, 20th to 1 500th. And on the front here we've got uh, the slow speed dial which runs from 1 20th of a second up to 1 second. And that does make quite a lot of difference um, because it means you can do slow speeds and it's just that little bit more versatile. There is a bulb setting on this camera just like on the Leica 2 so that when you push the shutter uh, button down the curtain opens and when you take your finger off the curtain closes. There is also a T setting which is a brilliant feature I've not seen on any other camera. Uh, it may very well exist on other cameras but I haven't seen it. And if you turn the slow speed dial here to the T setting, push the shutter button down, the curtain will open. You can then take your finger off the uh, shutter button but the, the shutter will not close so you can keep that shutter open for as long as you like you, you know go off and make a cup of tea or something whatever you want to do um, and then after however long you like an hour a couple of minutes a day turn this slow speed dial slightly from my point of view clockwise direction and the shutter will close. That's really good for getting very long exposures, um, for doing things like light painting or star trails if you're if you're into astrophotography. Um, very very useful little setting. One of the other ways that the Leica Three differs from the Leica Two is that it has this uh, adjuster here. Very nicely machined. Uh, it's really, really nice quality camera, like all the Leicas, which you can move it. Uh, so if you set it here, that's for when you're looking at near distance, and you set it to here for if you're looking at infinity. I think that's right. Ah, no, wrong way around. So it, it goes down here for for far distances if you're using your range finder. There's a range finder window on far distance, and then for near objects. You turn it to here, yeah, so it just helps you with the uh, seeing your rangefinder and getting your focus right. Uh, the other another difference that the Leica Three has to the Leica Two, it's got these little lugs on here, strap lugs. Um, some people say, you know, don't worry about strap lugs; it doesn't make a lot of difference. For me, it does because if I'm carrying one of these cameras around. Uh, I really don't want to drop it. I don't necessarily want to wear it around my neck with the strap, but I don't want to drop it. So what I usually do is get the strap, wind it around my hand and carry it. So if it does slip, you know, it's not going to go very far. And that's a really useful thing, uh, I think. Um, this is a chrome version. There were black painted versions. This is a chrome version. Um, and it's just beautiful. This It dates from 1935, this camera, and it's as good as the day it was made. I mean, lit almost literally. It's 79 years old, I think. 80 years old, rather. 
I'm not very good at maths. Um, the shutter curtains are in perfect order. The range finder is in pretty much perfect order. The mechanism has no slop and no play in it. Um, it's just a beautiful little thing that's really stood the test of time very well. Um, if you look at the engraving on the top there, yeah, look at that beautiful, beautiful engraving there. It's so fine and precisely engineered. Until you actually hold one of these cameras and see and use one of these cameras, you just don't know how nice they are and what all the fuss is about. But I do assure you, it is entirely, entirely justified. They're, they're like a little jewel. They really are. Um, I bought this one uh, a couple of months ago off eBay and it cost me about 150 quid which is a brilliant price for what it is. Um, apart from anything else it's a beautiful old antique. This is the camera that I use the most. Um, I've got nice digital cameras, you know, they'll do all the modern things auto focus, auto this, auto that, um, loads and loads of settings to choose from, loads and loads of image, you know, varieties to choose from, um, but they're just not as nice as this, they're too complex, I find them very, very complex, this is so simple, all it is is light, a lens, a shutter and an aperture, uh, and all the processing is in here, you've got to know the light, you've got to know what you're doing. Um, and so the pro so you the camera becomes an extension of yourself and you become an extension of the camera. Um, because you're doing the processing. There's no there's no circuitry in there, it's just a, a levers and springs and a couple of rubber curtains. Uh, and it's very zen in that way. I think if xenography means anything, it means simplicity in uh, in your photography. And this is such a beautiful, simple way to look at light and to look at the world around you and to make art with photography. It's just beautiful. Um, it's also, you'll notice this camera also has mounted on the front there, a collapsible lens. This is not a Leica lens, this is a Russian lens. As you may well know, the Russians made copies of these cameras. In fact, they were copies of the Leica too, they didn't have the slow speed or the strap lugs. Um, but they made pretty much uh, exact copies of, of these cameras. They weren't finished as nicely. Uh, they were made by Fed and Zorki. Um, those are the two Russian uh, factories that made them, the, the copies. They weren't finished as ni nicely, but I've got to say they have stood the test of time. So they do seem to have the quality. Um, and this is a lens off one of those cameras. This is the Indostar 22 lens and it's a collapsible lens, the same as the lenses were that were shipped with the Leica cameras. Yeah, so pull it out, turn it and it locks and you're ready to go, you're ready to photograph. Um, and this is a really nice lens, I use these lenses all the time, I use Russian lenses all the time on, on uh, Leica cameras. I've never had any problem focusing with them. Some people say that there is a problem with focus, that they don't quite focus correctly. I've never found that. Um, still other people say that they don't quite mount properly, uh, that the, uh, the lens won't screw on the camera properly. Again, I've never found that. Um, there is also an Indostar lens called the Indostar 50, which I think is a little sharper, or said to be a little sharper than the 22. And there's a Fed lens as well. A very, on, on the very early cameras, there's a Fed lens which is collapsible, 
um, which is a different optical formula to this one. I think the Fed lens is nearer to the uh, the actual Leica formula, to the Elmar formula. Uh, these are not the same formula as the Elmar. The Indostars are not the same optical formula. But they do a lovely job. Um, they're a very, very nice lens. They, the aperture runs from f3.5 to f16. Um, not a particularly fast lens, but it does have that great, great advantage that it collapses and you can literally put that in your pocket. It's just fantastic. It's such a small camera and that's one of the main reasons that I use this camera is because it's so small. Um, I love the design, it's a very cool looking design, but you know, practically speaking, it's tiny. Modern cameras, digital cameras, um, unless you have a point and shoot, um, SLRs are enormous things. Um, mirrorless full frame are pretty big because you've got to have big lenses on them. Um, and even the micro four thirds cameras, some of those are pretty large as well. Uh, I think one or two of the Olympus versions will, will reach near to the size of this one. Um, but this is tiny, it's just very, 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 very small. And I really appreciate it for that. It's such a nice little machine. Um, so this is the one that I use most of the time. Um, the usual Leica method for focusing on composition applies. That is the usual early Leica method. This window here is the rangefinder window. And this window, window here is the viewfinder window. So you look first through this window to focus. And as we said last time, what happens with a rangefinder is you get a split image. Um, so if you're, for example, uh, if you're, a good way of putting it might be to say if, if I'm taking a photograph of my hand here. Yeah. So the split image is like this. You literally get a double image in, inside the rangefinder window and uh, as you focus, you find that the images come together. And when those images come exactly together, then you know you're exactly in focus. Um, and it works really well. And that's for this, this window here is the rangefinder window. Um, and when you focused, if you're focusing on something uh, very far away, you keep this downwards, this little lever here. Move the lever upwards when you're focusing on something pretty near to, nearer to. And that changes the uh, focus of the rangefinder for you. And this is the viewfinder window. So once you focus through this window, you then compose through this window here. Yeah. Uh, and then simply enough to uh, uh, just push the button and take a shot. Now, some people do find that a bit cumbersome, having to focus through this window and then compose through this window. I've got to say, once you get used to it, it it's not really a problem. I find it pretty simple. Um, and I would recommend anybody and everybody who wants to learn photography, even if you've been doing photography a long time, if you've never used an entirely wholly mechanical camera with no automation on it use one because it is the way to learn it really is the way to learn it it, it makes you understand light it slows you down a little in fact it slows you down a lot you can't just fire off shot after shot after shot um, it makes you appreciate what you're doing and it's just a really nice experience as I say this this camera cost 150 quid off eBay, body only. Um, 
it's probably uh, with a lens it would may, maybe would have come to 250 um, but the great thing about these cameras buy one use it for a little while take care of it look after it and you will always be able to resell it they ain't making them anymore you know so if 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 you've never used a manual camera before I really do suggest that you check one of these out and try it um, they're beautiful the experience is beautiful it's simple it's uncluttered there's very little to think about except what you want to photograph there's no settings um, no electronic settings to worry about there's um, you know everything there are only three variables on here which is focus aperture and shutter speed that's the only things you have to think about focusing is well what they called in 1935 automatic with the rangefinder um, and then for exposure either use a light meter the, there's lots of free apps you can use on your iPhone or your smartphone uh, to give give yourself a light meter or just use a cheap just get a cheap one off eBay a selenium cell one or from wherever else you want to get one or use the Sony 16 rule Sony stick Sony 16 rule is very simple to use um, and uh, it, it it will help you to understand the light and when you do go back to your digital photography which you will because it does obviously have advantages over over this system uh, in a different way you know so much more about what you're doing you understand what you're doing so much more and you appreciate what you're doing so much more so I'd recommend anyone I recommend everyone to try it you know people starting out people learning it's a great way to learn um, or if you've you know you've been using digital for some time maybe you learned on digital you you know you've you've had some experience in photography um, go and get one of these enjoy it use it discover a whole different way of taking photographs um, and as well as that apart from anything else film looks beautiful it really does nothing quite has the look of film Digital photography is, is great in many ways, but even with a simulation or an emulation package, um, you're just not going to get the same look as film. It just, just doesn't happen. Um, why doesn't it happen? Well, the whole process is different. Um, film has much higher dynamic range. That is to say it will capture a, a greater range of of light and shade within the same shot um, it relies on molecules of uh, salts of silver um, to record the image which are irregularly shaped whereas pixels are all regularly shaped and very square or, or uh, uh, you know very angular um, it's just a whole different uh, uh, organic sort of look and feel um, film grain is much nicer than digital noise um, and it's well worth having a go with uh, if you if you've never done it before this is how easy it is to shoot a screw mark like a lens cap off Lock the lens. Focus. That's how long focus takes. Compose. Yeah, there we are. I've not really a lot to compose in here. Um, set your settings. So I'm going to open up the aperture on there to 3.5. The aperture ring is actually there, right on the inside of the, of the lens going running around there. So I've opened it up to its maximum 3.5. It's not a lot of light in here. 
and the shutter speed is set to remember always wind on the film before you set the shutter speed the shutter speed is now set to one thirtieth of a second which is about right uh, for this light which isn't very much and we look through the viewfinder and make sure we're focused I'm going to come back and there we go and that's it that's all there is to it yeah so I strongly and heartily recommend that you have a go with one of these uh, or one of the Russian copies. Russian copies are a lot cheaper but they're not quite as nice to use. Um, so that's the Leica 3 um, and I guess that's it for this time. So for now for now uh, I'll, uh, I'll sign off for this time and uh, see you next time for more xenography whatever that should turn out to be